Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, moving on, let's say that we've been allocated class C, 200.15.10.0 slash 24. Again, the same as the last example. And here we're going to move the line all the way to the right. We're going to go with a slash 31. Obviously, we can't do a slash 32 if we want to have more than one available host now. You can use a slash 32 subnet mask, but there's only one host there. That's mostly used for loopback addresses. Don't worry about it yet. We're going to talk about that later on. So if you do need to have multiple hosts, then the furthest right you can go is a slash 31. If we wrote that subnet mask in dotted decimal notation, it would be 255.255.255.254. We get the 254 because it's 128 plus 64, 32, 16, 8, 4 plus 2 comes up to 254. So that leaves one bit for the host address, which has obviously got a possible value of a 1 or a 0. So a class C, a, a slash 31, it borrows 7 bits for the network address from the host address. That gives us 128 subnets, which is to the power of 7. Again, let's count it up. 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. And that's going to accommodate two hosts each. So that's what we get with a slash 31. The valid host addresses would be 200.15.10.0 to dot 1, 200.15.10.2 to dot 3, then 200.15.10.4 to dot 5, etc., all the way up to 200.15.10.254 and 255. You can check this by we're using 200.15.10 so the first three octets are never going to change the last octet you just start with all zeros and then it would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and then a zero or a one and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, and then a zero or a one and so on okay but wait if we're using a slash 31, there's only two possible values to assign to host. What about the network and broadcast address? Yeah, a slash 31 subnet breaks the standard rules of IP addressing, where we have to have the network address and the broadcast address at the top and the bottom of the range. Slash 31 subnets are, however, supported on Cisco routers for point-to-point -point links, if you think about it, a point-to-point -point link for just one side and the other side, well, any traffic that comes from here needs to go to the other side and vice versa. There's nowhere else for it to go, so there isn't really any point in having a network and a broadcast address. So that's why Cisco allowed that exception. You can have a slash 31 on a point-to-point -point link. Okay, next up, moving on, we're going to move the line back a space. We're going to create a slash 30 now. The subnet mask in dotted decimal, 255.255.255.252. That and slash 30, they both mean the same thing. That is going to leave two bits for the host address. because we So we get two bits for the host address. Two to the power of two is four. Minus two for the network and the broadcast address. That gives us two possible hosts. It burrows six bits for the network address. If we count this up, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64 is our 64 bits, which can accommodate two hosts each. The valid addresses are on the first subnet, the network address is 200.15.10.0, and the broadcast address is 200.15.10.3. The valid addresses are dot one and dot two. The next subnet is 200.15.10.5 to dot six, and the network is dot four, the broadcast is dot seven. The next subnet, the network would be dot eight, the valid addresses would be nine and 10, and the broadcast would be dot 11, and so on. Okay, as you look at this, the way that you can calculate what the different valid subnets are gonna be. Notice where the line is, it's after the number four. So the network address is going to go up in values of four. 
The first network address is dot zero, the next network address is dot four, the next network address is dot eight, dot twelve, dot sixteen, and so on. And because we know the network addresses, we can work out what the broadcast address and the range of valid IP addresses are going to be. So here it's it's going up in values of four. The first subnet is going to be a zero. So zero is the network address. And because the next range starts at dot four, the broadcast address must be dot three. So if zero is the network address and dot three is the broadcast address, the valid host addresses must be dot one and dot two. The next subnet it starts with four. The next subnet after that is at dot eight. So the broadcast address must be dot seven. So network address of dot four, broadcast address of dot seven. That leaves the the addresses in between of dot five and dot six are available to be assigned to our hosts. Okay, let's look at the a comparison between the slash thirty one and the slash thirty now. Hopefully you noticed that they both supported two hosts per subnet. But a slash thirty one supported 128 subnetworks, a slash thirty only supported 64. So you're maybe thinking, oh, well, we're always going to use slash 31 then. And a slash 31 is useful if you need to maximize the use of your address space. But a slash 30 is more commonly used. It's more standardized. For the CCNA exam, if you get a question where you've got the choice where you could use either a slash 31 or a slash 30, always use a slash 30. So if, if the question requires you to come up with a subnet that supports two hosts, use a slash 30, unless the question explicitly tells you to use a slash 31. Okay, so we covered a slash 30 and a slash 31. Next up is a slash 29. So we're going to move the line back a space again. A slash 29 in dot a decimal is 255.255.255.248. Again, we get the 248 because it's 128 plus 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8 up to where the line is. That leaves three bits for the host address. Two to the power of three is 248. 8 minus 2, because of the network address and the broadcast address, gives us 6 available host addresses. And class C, the default subnet mask is 24. Here we're using a slash 29, so we're borrowing 5 bits for the network address. 2 to the power of 5 is 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. So we've got 32 available subnets here. The valid host addresses, notice that the line is after the 8. So the network addresses are going to go up in values of 8. The first one will be 0, then 8, then 16, and so on. So the first subnet, the network address is 0. The next subnet, the network address is 8. So the broadcast address for that first subnet must be one less. It's going to be 200.15.10.7 for our example. So the network address is dot zero and the broadcast address is dot seven. That leaves dot one to six available to be assigned for our hosts. The next subnet is going to be, we said already, starts off with dot eight. The next one is at dot 16. So our broadcast address now must be dot 15, one less, which leaves the available host addresses of dot nine to dot 14. And we can go on like this all the way up to 200.15.10.248 is the network address, dot 255 the broadcast address with host addresses 249 to 254. And we can carry on moving the line back a place. So we did slash 31, slash 30, slash 29. We could also do a slash 28, which is 255.255.255.248. That is going to give us 16 networks of 14 hosts each on a class C. Again, the default is a slash 24. If we are using a slash 28, we've borrowed four bits. Four bits is 24816 available subnets and after 28 it goes up to 32 so we've got four bits available for our host addressing that is 24816 minus 2 for the hosts which gives us 14 available hosts. The, we can move the line back again to a slash 27. That's going to be borrowing three bits. So that is two, four, eight available networks, leaving five bits available for our hosts, which will be two, four, eight, 16, 32 minus two gives us 30 available hosts. 
you can see how I'm getting that now. A slash 26 is four networks and 62 hosts. A slash 25 is two networks and 126 hosts. And slash 24 is the default one network with 254 hosts. Okay, so that's how we carry out subnetting and figure out how many networks and how many hosts we're going to have. Next thing to tell you about is variable length subnet masks. With early routing protocols like RIP version 1, they only supported fixed length subnet masks, which meant you could subnet, but all subnets in a particular network had to be the same size. So you, the, all of your different subnets had to accommodate 14 hosts, for example, or 30 hosts, for example. And if you had one subnet that needed up to 30 hosts, you had to have all your subnets at a size of 30 hosts, even if one of them only had three hosts in it. Then, with later routing protocols, they came out with support for variable length subnet masks. That means that within the same range, you can have different sizes of subnets in there. So say I've got one part of my network which has got 10 hosts in it, I could, I could give them 14 available hosts, and another part of a network that's got 28 hosts there, I could give them a subnet mask that gives them 30 available hosts. Okay, so variable length subnet masking, it means we can use different length subnet masks within the same network. This is a good thing because it lets us be much more precise with the size of our networks and we're going to be wasting a lot less addresses. We'll cover how to do VLSM variable lamp subnet masking in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.